So tonight's lab, it's actually one that we probably should have done first. I don't know why this was put off till experiment number nine, um, because it's a really important concept in not just chemistry, but any, any kind of science, is when you're doing a measurement, there's always oh, some amount of uncertainty. Uh, yes. My skill broke, so I had to buy this big one. Oh, okay. It's going to be an issue. As long as, it, as, long as it uh, can go down to uh, one. Okay. Does it, does, it, does it give you, how many significant digits does it give you? I don't know. I haven't, I think three. Well, as long as there's two digits beyond the, the decimal, you're fine. Okay. Thank you. And if there is just one, then that goes in your report as, I mean, that's, that's the perfect, that's sort of what I'm talking about <laughs> is measurement and, and, and uncertainty. I'm sorry, your scale broke, man. I've got like two of them. I guess I got like water in it and then it wouldn't open anymore. And I tried looking on the website. Cause I like, cause it says like the website name on it. I tried looking for it, but I couldn't just find the scale. So I went to target and I bought this one. <laughs> <laughs> How much did it cost you? It was twenty dollars, but oh. I, well, you can still you, you like I use I use one for baking, yeah, and all the time. So it's still it's still plenty useful. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be using a lot of different um, uh, things for measuring, uh, like water, basically, and converting uh, volume of water to mass, and trying to figure out. Uh, how precise and how accurate uh, different things are for measuring. One of the things we're going to be using for measuring is this 25 milliliter flask, which is this used for measuring? Anyone tell me if this is used for measuring or not? And then more for weighing? Because the measurements. Wouldn't there have to be more um, measurements in order to measure something? Yeah, so basically it is not used for measuring. We use these for doing reactions in, um, for mixing things um, uh, together, but we do not use this for measuring. And you will see tonight um, that when you try and use this to measure something, it is just not up to the task. So we'll be comparing things that are like actually designed for measurement and things that are not and see what the uh, see, see, see what the differences are. And if you did the pre-lab, and I'm pretty sure you did, you'll remember that really early on, we talked about the differences in accuracy and precision. And so what we strive for is both. Um, but what we really want is accuracy. Accuracy is the is is a measurement that is closer to the actual answer. Precision means that whatever instrument you're using gives you very similar results over and over again, but they may not be accurate, and that may be due to um, the design of the instrument. It may be due to that you're not using it properly. A lot of other things. So we're going to talk about some of those errors. So we're going to you know you measure length weight, mass, volume, all, all sorts of different things. Um, tonight, we'll uh, be, be measuring temperature as well. Um, when we know we're measuring liquids, we deal with something called the meniscus, right? Because typically, especially with water, water, since it's super polar and binds to each other, it sort of crawls up the sides of whatever container it's in. That's due to its capillary action that it's sort of pulling molecules up the side and so we get instead of getting it straight across we get something that looks like that and you remember that we always measure the volume from the bottom of the meniscus so for something like this with a this is a 10 mil cylinder when you look in there no two people are going to give exactly the same measurement. Um, well, that's not quite true. You may give a, a precisely the same measurement, but no two people are gonna see it like exactly the same. Um, so some would look at that and say that it's, we know that it's more than six 
and less than seven. That is that that part is clear. Um, we know that it's more than six point seven mils. We know it's more than that, but it's less than six point eight. And so remember, this is where the the last decimal of a measurement is always a um, when you're using something like this is always an estimate. And so this number is significant, this number is significant, but so is your estimate of where it falls between 6.7 and 6.8. And so that's one of the things we're gonna be um, looking at tonight. There is an error involved in that. And there's really nothing really you can do about it. Um, what you wanna do is minimize it as much as possible. So whenever scientists measure anything, there's always gonna be an error associated. There's, there's no way to, to measure something exactly. But if we can get the, the errors down to a very, very small, then we will have done a good job with our measurements. So I already mentioned accuracy and precision. And then there's a number of different errors we're gonna be dealing with. The first one we wanna talk about is systematic error. So that causes measurements to be inaccurate in a certain value and a particular direction. So I think the, the example they give here is your alarm clock being slow by five minutes, meaning it is always precisely five minutes slow. Rather than one day it's five minutes slow, the next day it's five minutes fast, the next day it's two minutes slow, the next day it's three minutes fast. That would be more random. This is systematic error. And we can correct systematic error pretty easily. If you know that your alarm clock is being is, is slow by five minutes, you basically tell yourself, well, then I know exactly what time it is. It's five minutes slow and you just deal with it. And so you correct that systematic error. So the absolute error would just be whatever the measurement is minus what the actual measurement is. And anyone know what this means? What is this, these marks around, if I have X minus Y and I have these two bars around it, what does that mean? Absolute value. What does that mean? Um, well, I know that in the brackets, if it's a negative number, it becomes a positive. And if it's a positive, it stays a positive. Right. So it just always means it's a positive number. Exactly. So what that tells you, the absolute error would be the absolute amount away from the correct uh, value, whether it's positive or minus. That's right. So relative error we basically give that as a percentage. And this is when the error sort of is, is plus or minus. So it is not the same as the error we mentioned previously, which is always the same and always in the same direction. A relative error can be a little bit slower, a little bit faster, but you want a certain tolerance. And the measurements they're given here is for speedometers in cars. And so, it says most automobile manufacturers have a tolerance of plus or minus 2%, meaning that the actual speed that your car is going must be plus or minus 2% of whatever the speedometer is telling you it is. So if you're going 60 and the speedometer says you're doing 61, that would give you a relative error of 1.6%, which would fall in line with being less than two. So the plus or the minus, um, basically we just say it would be, be either less, 2% less or 2% more. So it's actually a window of 4%, which is not enough to you know, basically tell the cops that you know, the speeding isn't your fault because the speedometer has the tolerance of plus or minus 2% because you generally don't get a ticket for going 2% faster than the speed limit. So then finally, there is error 
that really isn't involved with the um, instrumentation you're using, but more the person doing the measurement. And that is just random error. So we can get better at eliminating random error by you know, practicing, working in the lab longer, learning new techniques, but you can never eliminate it. It is always going to be there. You're always going to have, like for instance, the, the um, I'll show you in a second, just going back to the example of looking at the meniscus in, in a graduated cylinder. There's always going to be that error there. I mean, you'll get better at you know holding it up and looking at it exactly at eye level. That will reduce your error. You'll get better at remembering to put some sort of you know background behind it, maybe like a dark background, so you can see the meniscus better. That will reduce your error, but you're never going to reduce it down to zero. So what we want to be able to do is have an estimate of what our random error is going to be. And so that is related to uncertainty. And we can actually calculate what our uncertainty is. And so basically, if we want to measure 10.00 grams of something, and we can measure our uncertainty, and our uncertainty is plus or minus 0 0.001 grams, then we can be very certain that we can measure this amount accurately. If our uncertainty is plus or minus 0 0.1 grams, then there's really no way we could measure 10.00 grams accurately. We would need to find another method of measuring the mass in order to do that, okay? So let's just look at that example again, just a little more closely. So you can see the bottom, like I said, the, the, this, uh, it's gonna, this volume is gonna be between 6.7 and 6.8, but different people would, would say it's 6.75, 6.74, 6.76, 7, 8, whatever it is. So what we do to, to determine what the uncertainty is, is see what is the measurements that is definitely below that and definitely above it. That would be certain. So if in this instance, since we have these um, marks at every 0 0.1 mils, we can say for certain that it is larger than 6.7. And we can say for certain that it's smaller than 6.8. That tells us what the uncertainty is. And so we look at their measured value. This is our high interval that tells us that we know the measurement that is higher than what for sure what what our measurement is this one is the low interval we know for sure that our measurement is above that and so we just add them we um subtract the difference so the difference in this case would be 0 0.1 and we divide that by two so our uncertainty for this measurement, we would say is plus or minus 0 0.05 mils. And, and if you look at your, um, uh, your glassware, a lot of times it will tell you what the uncertainty is. You don't even have to calculate it. And so if you check, you'll see that on different size, on your 10 mil cylinder and your 50 mil, cylinder should have different uncertainties on them. And we'll, so we'll, we'll check that when we get all of our uh, stuff together. On something like this, you notice there's no uncertainty on here at all because it's not used for measurement. Anything used for measurement, we will get a certain um, uncertainty discussed and associated with it. So this is what we're gonna need. Um, gonna need really simple experiment tonight. So we just need a small graduated cylinder, a large graduated cylinder. We need to know what the um, temperature is in whatever uh, room you're working. And 
the uh, smaller of the two beakers we have, and just a couple of plastic cups. And of course the scale. And that's it. So, and some water. So first we're gonna determine what the uncertainty is in the balance. And to do that, we just take two plastic cups, oops, two plastic cups and label them one and two. And we just weigh them a number of different times and see what the deviation is from the average. Now, if we have a good, if we're, if, if we're using it properly and um, we're allowing the, the number to, to stop moving and settle into to a result, we should have pretty low um, uncertainty. But we're gonna do four plus one, five readings. And then the, so there, there's a table to, to write those down and then calculate the deviation from average. So the average deviation will be the uncertainty of your mass measurements with whatever balance you have. And I'd be curious to see if, if everyone's is the same. And I'm really curious to see if uh, the one Rosin got is gonna be different. So we'll see. Then we wanna see the determination of uncertainty in using different glasswares. So in this instance, we're gonna use the 10, 10 mil cylinder and put seven mils of water in it. And then we're going to weigh the cylinder with the water in it to determine the mass of water. And that's how we're gonna see whether or not the volume that you measured as seven is actually seven. How are we gonna relate the volume of the water to the mass? How are we gonna do that? We're going to measure the mass of the water, but we're measuring the. You're going to be using your eyes to measure the volume in the cylinder. And then we're going to check and see how accurate that was based on the mass. How, how are we going to do that? And we also have to weigh the, um, the cylinder. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then yeah. we just subtract it. Right. But you're still going to have a mass of water. You're not going to have a volume. How are we going to relate those two things? What's the relationship between mass and volume? Oh, is it the density? It's the density, exactly. And that's why we're gonna to need to measure the temperature in the room because the density of water is dependent on the temperature. And so we're going to measure, um, you, you're gonna to want to record the highest and lowest volume intervals for whatever piece of equipment you're using. So the 10 mil graduated cylinder will have a different higher, higher and lower interval than the 50 mil cylinder and the flask and the, the beaker. They're all gonna have different higher and lower volume intervals. So we're gonna calculate the uncertainty of the measurement, which is the high volume interval subtracting and the low volume interval divided by two. And then we'll calculate the mass of the water in each one. Okay, so here's data table one, very, very simple. Just have two different cups. Um, they should be approximately the same mass. I mean, they're manufactured at the same place at the same time. So they'll be, they'll be exactly the same, but they'll be pretty similar. To each other. So you just basically see what the average is, what the deviation of the average is from cup one and cup two, and just record it there. For data table two, here's where you record the mass 
of the uh, the empty glassware and then how much water you're putting in for seven for a graduated cylinder it was seven mils what's the high volume interval what's the low volume interval calculate the uncertainty what's the mass of the water so then the final calculation to do is then to take that mass and turn it into volume. And so the third data table is taking that mass of water from, from the second activity, measuring the temperature of the water in the room. So it should, the water that you're using should be at room temp. So like it should be, you know, in the room for at least like half an hour or so. So it comes to the same temperature as the room. You can even put your thermometer in whatever the water is and see what temperature it is. Then we'll see what the density, you don't have to calculate the density. I'll show you that there's a table in there. Hopefully you've already read it. That's a table, uh, table of density for the water. And then you just calculate the volume and see how close you were. And hopefully you will see that with the 10 mil graduated cylinder, you'll be a lot closer to the correct answer than you will be with the Erlenmeyer flask. Just because these things are designed to uh, measure and these two are not. So you should see that those, the second two are very inaccurate and it's not your fault because that's what they're designed to do. So this is what the temperature, this is the table you would use to determine uh, the densities. You can see that they're all, you know, really, really close to one, but it does change as you go from, so to sort of read this table, you just go to, let's say that the temperature in your room is like 19.6 degrees Celsius. So you'd start at 19 and you go across to one, two, three, four, five, six, that would be the density of the water at your temperature. So you can see that it will vary from 18 degrees, it's 0.999, but at 27 degrees, it's 996. So just that little change in temperature um, helps the, you know, gets those water molecules moving just a little bit faster than they push a little bit further apart from each other. And the density goes down just a little bit. But if we're going to be accurate in our measurements, we need to take this in, into consideration. Okay. So this table is in, is in there. So you don't need to look it up. All right. So let's take about um, five minutes, get everything um, gathered together and we'll get started. Anyone have, have any questions before we get started? Do we still need to wear our safety goggles for this experiment? Well, I mean, we're supposed to, but I won't tell if you won't. Okay. All right. I'll see you in five. Okay, so if you look at the different, um, no cameras on people. If you look at the different pieces of glassware. Hi everybody. So if you look at the top, you won't be able to see this. Okay. Oh, here we go. And that doesn't really help. But look at the top of your 10 mil um, graduated cylinder. And you'll see that it says, um, SCO or Cisco, I guess that's the name of the company that made it. And then below it, it says 10 and then colon zero plus two, zero point two. So basically it's telling you what the uncertainty is in measurements for this. So 10 plus or minus point two. Now we should be able to get that a little more um, accurate than that because each particular 
um, measurement is 0.1 mils, right? Each major tick is, is a mil and each minor one is 0.1. So we should be able to do better than that. And just below that, if you'll notice, it says TC slash TD 20 degrees C. Anyone know what the difference between TC and TD is? Something we haven't really talked about. I'll tell you what TC is. You tell me if, if, if you can guess what TD is. TC means to contain. So basically, it's guaranteeing you that when you look at a uh, measurement on here, it's guaranteed to contain that plus or minus 0.2 mils. What do you think TD stands for? Deviate. To deliver. To deliver, exactly. Excellent. Yeah, because there, there are some pieces of glassware that are just designed to contain something. And so do the measurement from there. This is designed to contain something and then deliver it accurately. Like for instance, a volumetric flask is basically a big round flask with a single line, just this one line on it. And it is, it is designed to contain exactly like one liter or exactly 500 mils or something like that. But it's just designed to contain. Now, if we look at the larger, if we look at the 50 mil cylinder, you can see that now it's 50 with a colon one. So that's basically telling you that it's 50, and each one of these ticks is one mil in between. Oh, that's right. These, but the 10 mil, there's actually only five ticks in between each mil. That's what the point two is for. I forgot that this, this doesn't have 10 ticks in between, only five. Yeah, so it's basically telling what the intervals are. So our error should be less than the intervals in between. So Raza, what, what, what are you getting as a, as a mass for your 10 mil cylinder? Um, I'm gonna do it right now. So I get like exactly 11.00 grams. Are you just getting one past the decimal or two? I got 12 grams. Just? Just 12 grams. With no decimal? No decimal. Ooh, okay. Is that bad? Well, it's gonna be tricky to do the experiment without that kind of accuracy. But, you know, plow ahead. Okay. Calling where the water hits and guesstimate. <laughs> guesstimate. Ugh. Yeah, I know. Nails so, so bad in science. <laughs> <laughs> so inaccurate. It's either a guess or an estimate. I don't, there's no right. such thing as right. a guesstimate. Right. Um, yeah. So for, for, for the 25 mil, mm -hmm. I would say that your low, your low um, level is zero and your high is 12.5. Oh. Right? Because there's there's no there's nothing to tell you what okay. you're totally on your own when when, when you're okay. putting what was it seven? How much is goes in here? Uh 17. 17, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, in that instance, your low would be 12.5 and your high would be 25. Okay, okay. Because oh. yeah, because you, what know, it's showing. you know it's going to be higher than 12.5. Definitely, okay. right? If you don't put at least 12.5 in there, you know you don't have 17. But since there's only two intervals on this whole thing, 
well, three to consider zero an interval. Okay. Your low is going to be 12 and a half and your, your high is going to be 25. Okay. What about the beaker? The, uh, the 250 ml beaker. Right. So the, I think this is, this is a, a different case than the flask because the, the flask only has two intervals on it and you really can't um, estimate in between very well because of the shape of this. Because as a, the shape isn't consistent, right? It's, it's, it's not straight up and down. So you right. have a really hard time trying to guess what's in between. But this one, it's the same shape all the way up and down. So even though, so the intervals here are 10. Yeah, the intervals here are 10 mils. And so I think you could probably estimate oh, okay. what the intervals are underneath. It's sort of, you know, it's up to you to figure out how accurately you can estimate that. Because I wouldn't say your, your low estimate is, your lower limit is zero and your upper is 50, even though there's nothing below 50. Just be, but because of the shape, I think you can have a better, you have a better um, try of trying to get 35 in here. Quick question again about the, the Erlenmeyer flask doing the, yeah, the, the 25 milliliters. Um, um, well, when I did the, the, the so you're fading in calculation of these certain- Fading in and out a little bit there. Uh, could you, could you uh, repeat that? Oh. Uh -oh. says my internet connection stable. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, for um, the question for the Erlenmeyer flask doing the um, the formula, the um, the measured value, the high interval. So when I did the the twenty five milliliters plus five divided by two, it actually equals eighteen point seventy five milliliters instead of seventeen. Seventeen was the amount they said to pour into it. Well, your low limit for this is 12 and a half and your upper limit's 25. Yeah. So the difference is oh, 12 whoops. and a half I divided by I did. two should be like 6.3. Oops, I see what I did. <laughs> Oops, right? never mind. I didn't... Okay. okay. I, yeah, I added yeah, so basically what we're shooting for there is, you know, you're basically looking at 17 plus or minus six. Yeah, I so basically when you when you when you determine the actual uh, volume of this based on the mass, if you're within six of 17, <laughs> you've done basically as good a job as as, as you can using that. It's like the website. But I was looking at it and I found it online. So I'm gonna order the same one online. Okay. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, if only Fry's was still open. I mean, you know, Fry's would be the place. You should be able to get something like this around. I think you can actually order it through, um, you know, the lab because, you know, there's a section when it lists the materials needed. It lists a thing where it says, if you want to reorder it, you could. Oh, I'm going to take that. Okay. Oh, yeah, but I wonder how quick it'll be. I know. Oh, yeah, like it says, we order information, I doubt and then it'll please get call. Here. Oh, but yeah, just uh, yeah. If you're going to do that, Zan, yeah, just s send me a note. So if if your report is like you know a week or two late, I'll understand why. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. Now you got to pay her back for how much she has to spend. <laughs> These are pretty cheap. I mean, I bought what I was. Um, volunteering at, at high schools. I think I bought like 10 of these for, for my, for my class and they were like 10 bucks each. So they're not, they're not that expensive, which is why they don't tend to, to last very long. Huh? The uncertainty for the, Two granulated cylinders, the 10 and the 50 ml. 
mm-hmm. they're the same. But then if you look at the 25 versus the 250, it's a bit higher. I don't know if that's supposed to be indicative. You that... should have much less uncertainty for the 10 mil than the 50. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I thought you just said you had the same uncertainty. No, no, no. The 10 ml granulated cylinder and the 50 ml granulated cylinder, the uncertainty, the number is the same. It's 0. 0.1. It's pretty low. But um, the 25 well, the 50 versus should the 50 should be higher than that. Oh. Because the 50 um, for the 50 should be, should be higher than that. Because each, each division on the 50 mil is one mil. Because for my high volume, I wrote 24.1. And for the low volume interval, I wrote 23.9. No, you can't have that because because the intervals here are um, two, no, one. The intervals here are one mil. So what would you write for the high versus the low interval for the 50? Well, what did, well, what did you see? I mean, I don't, I don't know what. Um, oh, well, I mean, for the low, I mean, it was just below the straight line that would indicate 24. So that's okay, why. I'm so like, what's what's lower than twenty? What's the? So I wrote twenty three point nine. No, I, would, that that's that's twenty would be twenty three. Oh, because these are one mil diff intervals, not point two. And then for high volume interval, I mean it was right at would be, the line. Would be twenty four. So. Oh, okay. So the low would be twenty three, and the high would be twenty four. Because you know it's between 23 and 24, without doubt. But you said the meniscus was just slightly below 24. So your estimate would be like 23.8 or 9, right? Yeah. Yeah. But then you say I shouldn't have it like that? No, it's asking what the high and low intervals are. Oh, okay. For the 250 ml beaker for the high and low, since like they think the first line of measurement is 50, can I measure that in my 50 ml? Yeah, that's like I've sort of been saying that that one that one's tricky. I I would probably I don't know maybe you just you could draw a line down here or something. I mean, I, I would say that your your s your 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 higher and your low or are not going to be zero and 50, but they're not going to be as good as if it was above 50. So I think you're sort of left to consider that for yourself of what you think your high and low intervals are. So. Because if you look at the intervals here are 10, 10, yes, or 10 mils. So by I, do you think you could do 15 as far as intervals go? Trying to get real low here, possibly. Yeah, probably, right? So 15 ml for the low and 50 ml for the high. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you think you can. I think it's more than 15. I think it's. You think it'd be more like 20? Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. I mean, now basically it's, it's, it's up. It's basically a measure of how accurately you think you could do it. And then we'll see, you know, when you, because you're actually going to get a number when you, when you measure the mass of this thing, you're actually going to get a number of the volume. And we'll see whether you got it within, whether you got it within that interval. Okay. And so putting 50 ml for the high, do you think that's unreasonable? Um, Because I feel like it's 
that's a little high, I would think. Maybe 45 or something. I mean, it's it's really it's up, it's it's your call. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 a hard one because everyone's gonna have a different take on on what their interval is gonna be for that one. So we can't get it wrong. Well, I didn't say that. I mean, if you said your high, <laughs> you said your high interval is 300, then, <laughs> then I'd say that's probably not correct. All right. Thank you. Um, how do you want us to measure the current room temperature? With a thermometer? Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, like how? Because you know what? We just swing the thermometer in the air to measure the temperature, or like? No, you just because then it, it says for simplicity, you assume the water used in activity two was this was the room temperature. Yeah, you could just measure the temperature of your water. Oh, okay. Because yeah, it like... looks like because because that looked like that that was a container that had been in the room for a really long time, right? And it's not, it's yeah, not, it's not heated or cooled or anything. No. Yeah, so just, just, like just, measure the, just measure the temperature of the water. Okay. Just curious, do you like Campbell soup a lot? Sorry. The soup. Campbell soup. Yeah. What was it? Campbell. It's okay. <laughs> no, because your picture has has you looking at the soup or something on 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 a on Facebook. So that's why I was like, huh, you must have went to like some museum or something. Oh yeah, that's a very that's a famous portrait by Andy Warhol. Oh, okay. That's at the I thought Museum of Modern Art in uh, Washington. Oh, I thought maybe you just really like soup, so you went to like the soup <laughs> museum or something. But soup is fine. Because, you know, Japan, there's like museums for everything. Brahmin Museum is pretty good. Yeah, Japan Japan is great. Point zero, zero point zero one two and zero point zero one two grams. Oh, so they were exactly the same. So they are the same. Yes. So why do you think the deviation if for, for a third cup from the same batch would be different? Mm, I mean, yes. If it was, if it was, a, if it was a completely amount. different cup, your deviation would definitely be different. But um, the idea is, if you know, if you had three basically identical cups from the same batch from the same factory made at the same time, would you expect the error in measuring the third one would be different from the first two? No. How come? Because it's made at the same time, same batch, and same time. And look at oh, yeah. look at your deviation for the for the for the first two. They're identical, right? Which is pretty amazing. I mean, usually they're close, but I mean, you got them to be identical. So I would expect a third identical cup would also have the same deviation okay i mean you could try it yourself just just to see but i'm pretty sure you know you're going to get the pretty close i mean basically it's asking you is it going to be a lot different i mean it's it could be slightly different like you could get you know 0.013 or something but it's probably not going to be dramatically different okay thank you because you've established that your balance has a certain amount of um, precision to it. And that, that uncertainty is low, right? That uncertainty is pretty, pretty low. So it's very accurate. So you wouldn't expect it to behave differently for some reason if you used a cup made at the same time in the same place. Um, so like in determining the highest degree of precision of the like pieces of glass sphere so like do we compare the like mass of water to the estimated like volume and see like which one's the closest to see if 
That's I'm sorry, could you, could you repeat that question? I lost a bit of that. So like for like question number two, it says like which piece of glassware has the highest degree of precision? So like mm -hmm. it's like find that, do we compare the like the values we get of mass of water and the estimated volume of water and see if like it's the closest? Well, like it wouldn't be the mass. Remember, you need to convert the mass of the water to a volume using the density. So that will give you the actual volume of water that you've that you've measured. Oh, so, um, so yeah, not yes. No, volume, volume, because you measure you measure the mass of the water in the container with your scale and then using the temperature of the room and the table with the density in it, you convert that mass on the, on, on the scale to a volume. Mm -hmm. It'll be almost exactly the same as, as the number in grams, but not, not exactly, because the water density is, is one gram per mil, I think at zero, zero degrees, I can't remember. Um, so you need to convert that mass to a volume and then compare your estimated volume to the actual volume based on the mass. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's 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 what the uh, tables for. That's what the density tables for. So what what was the what was the the temperature uh, where you were working? Um, I got twenty point eight. Twenty point eight. Mm -hmm. All right. So if we look at the table, twenty point eight would be. 0 0.9980 yeah. grams per mil. Mm -hmm. So then you use that to convert the mass to a volume and then compare it. Mm -hmm. So like, like I said, I mean, it's gonna be pretty close to one to one, right? It's like 0.998, it's, mm -hmm. it's very close to one, but we wanna be as precise as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's so that's that's the number to to use when you're uh, doing when you're doing that comparison. Okay, I got it. Thank you, Professor. Right. No problem. I have a question. <laughs> yeah. All right, Audrey. Um, I got stuck um on how you do the high volume interval and the low volume. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 easy for the for the two for the two um cylinders because basically it's written right on it but trickier for the other ones so which okay. which one did you have a question about the high volume and low oh volume. for which particular for for uh, for any of them yeah like like all of them okay um so all right so let's say I've got my, so this is my, my genius drawing of the 10 ml um, cylinder. Okay. So you're supposed to measure seven, seven right? So here's my seven, and then I got 7.2, 7 7.4, 7 mm -hmm. 7.6. So let's say my, um, All right, so let's say my that was my um, my volume. So I look at this mm -hmm. and I say it looks to be slightly above seven. So I can't say it's seven. So my low interval would be seven mils. Okay. And then my high interval would be whatever volume is indicated above it oh so whatever is the marked volume above it and so the mark the first marked volume above it is 7.2 so basically what what you're saying is your low and your high interval your low is i know my volume is higher than that it has to be and i know my volume is less than this it has to be because there's two lines on the cylinder that tell me so. So if it's and if it's exactly on seven, then I would do I probably would do the same thing because I know that it's it's not less than seven. 
Mm -hmm. And I know it's not more than 7.2. So your interval is going to be written right on, right on the whatever piece of, of, of glassware you're using. Okay. But you have to see um, where your meniscus shows up. So for the 50 mil, the 50 mil, each point on the 50 mil is one mil. So the large ones are 10, 10 20, yeah. and then there's, uh, yeah, one. In, there's yeah, 10 one. dots in between. So your intervals there would be like one mil. One, one. <clears throat> But then when you get to the other two, like the cylinder here, or, I'm sorry, the um, the flask. Can I use? Then we've only got, you know, what is it? 12 and a half. 12. And 25. 25. So, and you're asked to measure 17. 17. So the lowest it can be is 12 and a half and the highest it can be is 25. So the, the, those that's your high and your low interval for that one. Okay. Yeah, so your, your, your precision on that is gonna be pretty crappy. And then on the, on the 250, that one's, good. that one's tricky because you have the same shape all the way across, but it doesn't start giving you any intervals till you get to 50 mils. And then the intervals are 10. And then there's a hundred. So those intervals are, or I think they're 10. No, they're 10? Yes, mm -hmm. they're 10. So, um, and you're asked to do 35, which is obviously the lowest, the lowest. would say like the lowest interval is zero and the highest is 50. But I think you can do better than that because I think you can estimate your high and your low, you're basically on your own or trying to figure out what your high and your low interval is here. But based on it being 10 mils, it's your high and your low interval is probably going to be somewhere around 10 mils above 35 and 10 mils below. Okay. I would think. Got it. Yeah. But, but I was like measuring with like the water is like really straight. <laughs> <laughs> the 10 minute oh yeah 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 there's 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 not much of a meniscus when it's this big when yeah because this is really really wide and so yeah basically the water is pretty flat the, the the narrower and narrower the um the tubing gets the higher and higher the the water is going to climb up the sides so the meniscus gets bigger and bigger the smaller and smaller your 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 tube gets okay yeah Thank you. Got it. No problem. Like it's really straight. How can I? <laughs> well, actually, it helps, right? I mean, it helps you measure it a little more accurately if it's pretty much straight across. Yeah, because there's much of there's much less of a meniscus with the fifty than there is with the ten. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So 